Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. In this episode, episode 54, we're covering chapters 1 and 2 from part 1 Metamorphosis of book 3 Imago of the Xenogenesis trilogy by Octavia E. Butler. Uh, my name is Richard Acton and I'm joined as always by my co-host. Michael Glinka. Hi everyone. A uh, new book, new start, exciting yes. new characters. Mm-hmm. It's always it's, yeah. it's interesting. Uh, it, it's, it immediately starts interesting, so... I'm I'm super excited to go through this book the next year and a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the um uh, you know yet another uh, like protagonist uh, or sort of you know viewpoint character shift, right? We've we've yeah. uh, had a, a new one for every book. Absolutely, yeah. It seems that you know this is the pattern for this series of books that every book has a new protagonist. Um, we had Lilith in mm-hmm. book one, Akin in second book, and now we have a third protagonist um mm-hmm. but it was sort of in a way looking at it now i mean <laughs> looking after the fact it sort of was obvious but you know not so much mm. when you actually go through a book <laughs> chapter by chapter <laughs> for a very long period of time yeah sometimes you, you don't necessarily step back and, and look at the you know the forest for the trees kind of stuff yeah but also it's uh you know we've got uh, a female a male and now a new lawyer. yeah right so and you know, one one of each to be honest, I initially I thought that um, you know because Akin's story hasn't finished yet, mm-hmm. right? So I thought that um, you know my prediction was like, oh, you're going to join Akin's perspective at least for the time being, because you know we we know that he's uh, hard uh, working on preparing for Mars. So I was like, oh, maybe maybe we'll uh, seeing you know a bit of that ahead of you know beforehand but no not yet not maybe mm-hmm. later on at some point in the book we'll get some perspective akin's perspective but not at the, not, not for the time being at the moment it seems to be uh, a little bit i mean it's in the background right we have we have some of our resistor humans traveling through low to get to to mars yeah but uh, uh yeah it doesn't seem to be the the focus at least for now yeah absolutely absolutely mm. And uh, I just wanted to mention about the, the title of mm-hmm. this book, Imago, uh-huh. uh, which is uh, has a little sort of double meaning, right? The, it's it's a, a sexually mature adult insect uh, after its metamorphosis, um, and also uh, in its other meaning, and a usually idealized image of a person, often a parent, uh, that is formed during childhood and persists usually unconsciously into adulthood. Huh. So we have kind of these two... Uh, like overlapping definitions. <laughs> no, I um, see, I see. Um, and it, to be honest, fits pretty well with the concept in here, right? With the new character. Um, hmm. I wonder though. I wonder if this uh, definition was created before Octavia Butler pre- uh, uh, made this book, or, or did she establish this, coined this <laughs> term, or was it, uh, or was it before her time? I mean, I, I think uh, it, 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 like the second definition, I suppose. But yeah, the, the, I think it does, in fact, predate that. Um, okay. By a fair way, I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> uh, actually, the um, uh, readers of uh, the the Parahumans books, uh, Worm specifically, uh, w- will recognize this term as a uh, an arc title, I think, mm-hmm. from Worm. Uh, has a, a similar double meaning in that context as well. <laughs> yes yes yeah. well then shall we get to the predictions yes let's uh, talk about what you had uh, what you were thinking for for this book so i thought that in chapter one we'll begin with humans congregating in law um getting ready to join akin to go to mars and start terraforming and learning how to survive so this was pretty vague sort of mm-hmm. uh, um prediction by in my mind i thought that we will start from where we finished book two, right? So it was pretty open-ended. Mm. We knew that, you know, um, Tate and Gabe and the rest of the Phoenix Village were heading with Akin towards the village uh, of Law. And we will get some sort of interaction with the Law Village and preparation to, you know, to to go to Mars. But no, that, that's, that's sort of... That specific sort of meaning past. We, there is obviously human like congregation law, but um, to join Akin mm-hmm. Mars, but this is past. Some time has passed I mean, since then. Okay, I mean, it's, it's it's not exactly what you had in mind, but it is also correct, right? Yeah. <laughs> in, in the in the in the specifics, right? It's the you know, there are a bunch of people congregating in the uh, uh, the um, 
the human houses, which we get a uh, an Owen Carly ish perspective on, right? Yes. <laughs> They're kind of not great by comparison with the Owen Carly houses, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, ready to go to Mars. So. Yeah, so let's begin then with the chapter one, I guess. Um, exciting new chapter. So um, the chapter begins with, from a perspective of a new unknown character at the start of their metamorphosis. The problem was the way it was going um, was unusual without any signs as opposite to what mm. usually metamorphosis does to the Onkali. Um, there was no deep sleep, no physical changes, only sensations suddenly became more complex and confusing, but also unexpectedly seductive. And we know that both, uh, you know, Onkali, when they go through uh, metamorphosis or they see, you know, anything happens to them, usually there's some seduction involved. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's also like, you know, human puberty kind of has an analogous process. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Right. For instance, um, the character tells us a bit about water. It tastes sep- it could, the, 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 they could taste hydrogen and oxygen separately within it. And as things went on, they needed to relearn their perspective on the things they knew so far. Um, we get to learn more about the character's background. We are told about their parents. Being so old, they helped founding the Law Village. And we are told about Tino and Lilith. Their human father and mother, as well as Dichan and Achtjes, uh, their Onkali father and mother. And the fact that they never felt any connections with any of them. But our new character never felt the need and in fact felt that talking to them, like even talking to them was unappealing. Even the sweet Achtjes, so easy to talk to, was not a choice. Our character felt almost repelled by them. And obviously, finally comes Nikanj, the Uloi of the family. Mm. Considering the fact that it was an Uloi and could sense more, our character went to speak to them because if anyone, it would be Nikanj that would notice something wrong. Mm. That's an interesting um, aspect of this kind of maturation process, right? The acquiring of new senses Mm -hmm. uh, in some sense, right? That's not, you know, we don't really have something analogous to that per se in uh you know a, a human maturation right not not acquiring new perceptual capabilities mm. right that, that's an interesting thing to to think about right that's uh it'd be uh, really uh, interesting if we like randomly had enhancement of one of like you know senses you know vision hearing some mechanoreceptors mm. uh, type of thing but i think yeah but we don't get real, except for the awkwardness of our bodies, we are becoming more aware of those things. Mm-hmm. That That's it, no? <laughs> yeah, so not, not necessarily uh, uh, new sensory capabilities that are, that are uh, more generally useful, I suppose you might say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> that's a good way to put this, like it just <laughs> oh, made me giggle. So yeah, the story continues with our new character reaching Nikanj, talking to some uh, unknown man and woman, human unknown man and woman. They seemed to be alarmed and afraid, but when they saw that our character, a very human-looking character, considering we're giving information considering that Lilith was their birth mother, um, the couple calmed down a bit. The human smelled of sweet adrenaline, food and sex. Basically rock and roll. Um... <laughs> <laughs> described in there. Our character sat down and let Nikanj deal with the situation while they were waiting for their turn. We are told about Nikanj's smell, a very complex scent of an uloi because of all the reproductive material of other family members, as well as the cells of other plant and animal species that it was that it dealt with recently. We are also told about the underscent of Kal, the kin group it was born into. Our character never met Nikanj's parents or their fa- or other family members, but it could sense the Kal family group. The other scent was the Law King group that obviously it mated and lived with on the Earth. It's, hmm. it's interesting. It, it's uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's interesting because um, we were told earlier in the books that you know that there's the genetic memory of all the family, you know, like all the history of the Onkali, but the, the fact that there is actually a scent involved in the um group right in the in the in the kin that they originally from that's that's pretty interesting like it's not only genetic sort of 
uh, detections. So also, there's other senses that you know her- pheromones that uh, Onkali release to recognize each other. Hmm. Yeah, and it's also it's interesting we get so much kind of um, there was a lot of additional um, I don't know, color, for lack of a better word, in in the like the smell sensory space. Yeah. In in this individual, right? We we, we knew that the Onkali had a superior sense of smell, but we never got as much description yeah. in terms of smells before so it kind Absolutely. of emphasizes this uh like enhanced uh attention to kind of you know chemo perception in in this individual that we haven't really uh, encountered before and it's a and it kind of highlights the contrast of how like relatively pathetic the human sense of smell is yeah honestly <laughs> no, but it's also what's interesting when you were just saying that um i've realized that with each book we get more and more perspect on kali perspective right um hmm. we you know in the book one it was just lilith and we only got her perspective on the on kali then we had akin who at some point did experience the Onkali, you know, we were told more of the experiences he explored, he had of the Onkali's perspective from, you know, um, especially when he went back on the Chkachtak ship mm. to to uh, for the um, um, for the you know the Onkali meeting and being taught by the uh, um, by the Uloi and you mm. know being able to connect to that whole congregation and stuff. So we had a bit of that, but here we have more of the even further sort of details on the perspective of an Onkali human construct, but in a much more sensitive from a more sensitive perspective. And the, the Uloi are kind of the, the most Oankali of the Oankali, right? Yeah. The, <laughs> and that, so we, we have this, uh, yeah, definitely more Oankali perspective. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so, to mm-hmm. one t- uh, tiny additional point on the kind of human sense of smell thing. And, Go on. Uh, like, you know, our, our sense of smell or, or like our, our processing of it is, is like terrible even by comparison with other like earth animals right <laughs> oh well, i mean yes that. absolutely like, yeah like the area of our brain that is responsible for like uh smell censoring is, is supposedly about the area of a postage stamp whereas you take like a bloodhound and it's like the area of a handkerchief yeah and so this is like a ridiculously uh more sophisticated capability of of uh smell in a lot of other animals so um, you know, I, this is one of the things that would be interesting if we ever get into like human genetic engineering. Will we dial up our sense of smell, or will that not necessarily be a good idea? I mean, if you if we had to dial up the, our senses, then I guess our brain surface area or volume area a volume of our brain would have to also increase, right? To to um, ca- like get to, get, get, get uh, more more wrinkly as the uh, yeah the, get it more the, wrinkly one thing, but less also less smooth. <laughs> but also um probably the school volume would have to increase to 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 allow for the increase of the of the brain um because you know i, I just imagine um it's the, the old typical alien type of uh, perspective you know big heads big eyes mm-hmm. type of thing you know that that's what you know is going to happen to us if we <laughs> if we're going to go mm-hmm. this path um oh, the, the- the big eyes, maybe not so much. Um, like, it, it, for example, um, animals with really big eyes, like they take up brain volume, right? It, yes, owls, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. In particular, like yeah, people think of owls as wise, but they're actually kind of the the dimmest of the <laughs> of the like predatory birds. They Oof. have relatively small brain volumes because they have to dedicate so much skull space to their enormous eyes. The owls just got dissed by Richard. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I I love owls, but um. <laughs> so do I. But you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's the, yeah. it's interesting when you look at the skeleton of an owl, how small the animal actually is compared to like if, if where you the moment you remove, for example, feathers, the body mm. vo- is just absolutely tiny. Its majority of its body volume is the feathers, and then as you said, the head skull, the uh, the skull is actually absolutely tiny compared to its um to the, the eye sockets. So yeah. And the the eye sockets are like almost as big, or sometimes bigger than like the total brain volume. Yeah. It's just like they're huge because they have to work in such low light conditions. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. But yeah, going back to the visiting humans, um, our character could sense that the man and woman were long time mates. Um, their conversation with Nikan revealed that they were here because they wanted to travel to Mars, but they still weren't sure about it. 
He can't tell them that they will be explained and shown everything to ensure that their decision is correct. But as it stands, there were no shuttles available because all of them were preoccupied. But they could stay in the guest area, area built by humans. Although initially rejecting the notion of staying in law, Nikanj tells them it, that it doesn't know when the next shuttle will be available, so for the best course of action for them is to stay and wait. When Nikanj tries to show them the area, they both sort of move away in fear, so instead um, it asks our new character to do it instead. Here we learn our new protagonist's name, Jodax. Hmm. Is that the correct pronunciation, Richard? Um, I believe so, yeah. Jodas, something to that effect. Um, that's what the audiobook sounds like. So Good. that's canon as far as I'm concerned. Canon. <laughs> uh, my broken Polish English uh, accent pronunciation is canon now. There we go. You heard it, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, Nikan introduces Do- Jodas as one of its uh, younger children, which surprises the couple, especially the woman, because of how human Jodax uh, looked. He started opening the. Um, so. Jodak started opening the Onkali house doors, but they would not cross until the doors were open fully wide. That made him joke at them that it would be like being grasped by a big hand and maybe their clothing would be eaten. Um, he laughed but said mm. it never happened before, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that's terribly reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, knowing myself, if I was in this uh, uh, situation, I would try to cut, get myself caught at some point just just to experience <laughs> what it was. <laughs> would be like yeah, I don't know, just kind of like stuck halfway through the door. Yeah, and then like <laughs> you come out slowly being eaten, and the, like <laughs> the, the the you know the thickness of the door would just like your clothes were just gone. Just basically <laughs> comedy, the written being written, writing itself in there. <laughs> Yeah, it's like partially dissolved clothes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the woman asks Jodas about his name, to which he explains the meaning of Eka. That's how Nikanj referred to him originally. A child. Mm. We there told a bit more about the Onkali language. Lelka for married children and Chka between mates. Um, his full name was um, Jodax Liapolil Kalnikanj Law. Um, and here's a bit of excerpt of the book. My name is the surnames of my birth mother and human father, and Ikanja's name beginning with the kin group. Um, it was born and ending with the kin group of its Onkali mates. If I were Onkali born, or if I gave you the Onkali version of my name, it would be a lot longer and more complicated. I do kind of like their um, naming convention, right? It's, um, you know, nice and specific yeah it is pretty specific um it's similar to i would say similar to what for some eastern europe um has where you sometimes mm-hmm. have the men um sometimes saying their paternal names the patronymic thing yeah yeah the and word. then yeah. mod and women say their mother version you know like the, the who mm. who are their mother right like uh, mm. or, um but we don't. You don't get the, the full. Maybe some other cultures. I don't know. I think there's a similar thing in um, uh, some Arabian cultures as well. Like the ah uh, yes, the Arabic Ibn, names which yes. have a similar structure. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I think I have this strange feeling. We've talked about this before. <laughs> Yeah, it, it may well have done. Yeah, I suspect we may repeat ourselves. Yes, <laughs> occasionally. Yes. I'm pretty sure we are. Apologies for that. Let's move on. <laughs> we should go back and re-listen to the back catalogue and avoid... Re- oh my god. <laughs> Might take a while. Yes. Um, the woman says that eventually he will... Suggest that he will eventually he will drop some of them. But Joda says to her that they wouldn't because it's a very useful information, especially when looking for mates. We also learn a bit of about the origin of the name Jodas. And the Onkali named Jodas died helping emigration and Lilith wanted them to be remembered so they named our protagonist the same. It's interesting. Mm. So we do have some people, you know, some Onkali um, dying in the process of, uh, to, you know, preparing for uh, emigration as in Mars emigration. I assume so, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I'm guessing something in the preparation of, of Mars. I, went wrong. Uh, I suppose it's not... Not without some risk. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. It's uh, it, interesting that uh, and it's a nice little sort of characterization of uh, of Lilith again, right? She's still on the background, but we still get these little character uh, beats still yeah. recurring for her because uh, she's uh, still wants to do something to retain some human tradition, 
and uh you know the, this naming thing and you know she's, she clearly thinks it's an, an important effort that the the you know the emigration to mars and uh is wanting to honor one of the oankali who helped with that so yeah, yeah and it's uh man yeah, live is amazing I, I, I like that yeah <laughs> Oh, it's it's kind of uh, I do really enjoy the way that she's kind of uh, you know it it's uh, I, when I first read the 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 sequels mm-hmm. I was kind of you know like you know, Lilith becomes a bit more of a background character in them I was like I, I really like Lilith I like what is the protagonist but then I do enjoy the way that she's she's treated as that kind of background character because yeah. you still get these great um, additional bits of characterization for her that that just they make you kind of get a little bit of nostalgia for the for, for, for this is the protagonist. <laughs> mm, mm, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, the woman mentions that Jodax looks very human, but he tells her that's because he's still a child at the age of twenty nine. That's literally me. Um, <laughs> uh, but he mentions that they have a brother who underwent metamorphosis at the age of twenty one, and I'm here. I'm guessing it's Akin uh, being mentioned here. Because that's when Akin went, underwent his metamorphosis, and a sister who did it at the age of thirty-three. That I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't, uh, that I can tell who could that be. Um, hmm. I don't. Um, I don't know what the. Hmm. It probably I, I wouldn't su- be. I suspect it could be. It could be the um, Akin's sister, that the one he mentions that he talks to about when you know the problem with uh, when he's about to fly to the mothership with um, Tikuchak. And he talks to his sister. I don't remember her name. Mm. And I, uh, yeah. she was older than okay. him. So I suspect mm. maybe it was her. But uh, she already had children, I think. So I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know if we. I, mean, I think the the um, the other the other uh, um, other human born or construct that's like switched gender was is probably um, Akin's sister. But I, I uh, um, his like paired sister. But I, I don't know about um, um, or you know, paired acre that yeah. switched to be male. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't know uh, what the the one that uh, would have undergone metamorphosis at thirty three would be. I'm not sure what. Yeah, hmm. but I'm pretty sure that twenty one was Akin here because yeah, it just matches the everything here. Um, mm, I think. But as they were talking, they finally reached the guest area. Houses cut of cut wood and thatch where fire would be used to cook food and they would occasionally burn. Um, houses that did not burn would become infested with all matter, matter of rodents and insects and the Onkali would every so often help to get rid of them, but the pests would always come back to the human, uh, to the hu- around the humans. Hmm. As Jodas pointed the empty guest house, the woman noticed that he has in fact seven digits in his palm. Um, he tells them that he is the first generation, he'll change much after the metamorphosis but if they want to look with the more uniform the more uniform children they should check the third or fourth generation construct as they don't change much after metamorphosis and here's the this is interesting inf- little info right because um hmm. it seems that the generation like the the, the variety between the, the 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 way people look after metamorphosis has been is counting coming down with the each generation hmm. i think we, we kind of talked a little bit about um like why they had to be more human or more Ankali in uh, in the last book, right? Because basically they have to undergo gestation in their respective parents' yes, yes. like biology. So the the yes. the Aka has to be a bit more like the you know, respective parents, absolutely, uh, like ma- respective maternal parent species in order to uh, to deal with development. So I kind of I suppose it makes sense, right? You'd, yeah, you'd converge. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. For some reason, Jodax then feels that he needs to tell them what, what is expected to happen to them on Mars. That eventually they will kill themselves because of war, or because of their hierarchical ancestral behavior contradicts their intelligence, but precedes over it oftentimes. They argue back that he is but a child and repeats what others say, but Jodax says the only uh, that says the only he says only what he sees, right? Nothing less, nothing more. The man argues back that they might even outlive people on Earth, and ironically, Jada says, "I hope so, because eventually they will leave the planet anyway." You know, hmm. they're conversing. And yeah, only in mm. uh, a few hundred years, right? It's yeah. not uh, not that long before they uh, have finished their resource stripping and are good to go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The conversation finishes with Jada clarifying that the only reason Onkai are helping is 
because their constructs are making them. Otherwise, they would have never agreed to this because they know to the bone, and he is, you know, this was specifically said in the book, to, they know to the bone that humanity will destroy itself. Jodis then mm. finishes and starts to leave when he hears so goddamn patronizing, the male muttered. I turned back without thinking, am I really? <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of... Um... Uh, so far fairly typical Owen Carly right the fairly like bluntly honest without much tact on some of this stuff yeah yeah mm. absolutely the chapter mm. ends with Jodas uh with Jodas and the woman approaching him and touching his face of course like those who never mated with Owen Carly um uh, didn't re- without realizing that there are sensitive patches making Jodas feel uncomfortable and so what you have to teach people how to touch you uh, when he tells her, you know, it's it's the, the sensitive patches. I smiled and took her hand between my own. Hands are always safe, I said. I left her standing there watching me. I could see her through sensory tentacles in my hair. She so- stood her until the male came out and drew her inside. Oh, somebody has hornies for Jodas. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that whole, um, you know, metamorphosis thing and then them being a bit more attuned to... to you know, sexual stuff seems to be uh, an, another universal, right? That yeah. keeps happening. <laughs> Absolutely. Probably putting out some of those uh, pheromones without noticing. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, should we go to the chapter two prediction? Um, yeah, unless we have any other kind of reflections on that first chapter. Um, yeah, when we get introduced to our a new character, a little bit of information about them, not that much just yet. Not yet, but just a bit uh, of, um, just a bit of, as a introduction to the whole situation and a bit of mm. background where we know that some time has passed now that the ships are sending people to the to the Mars, but that that's pretty much it for the time being. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose we have the um, the the. It's not yet confirmed, uh, which we get into in the next chapter, but this this metamorphosis of. Uh, it's, what you know we can kind of guess is probably going to be an Uloi uh metamorphosis based on the description of the relationship with the parents right? yeah it's uh you know we have the the hinting of, of what's going to be the one of the sources of tension here absolutely uh, you know, a, a construct Uloi. so yeah that was pretty much also my prediction that you know something's going wrong with the metamorphosis and you know in a wrong way like similar to akin's and like and this time because of what you said you know the parents mm. being you know he he doesn't have that much um interaction with his family except you know maybe it is going in the wrong in the uloi direction Mm. but yeah let's begin with the chapter two summary then um so the chapter starts with jodas going back to nikanj and him waiting for the uloi to finish its work meeting people who just came from kachdak exchange information leave some biological samples as jodas was waiting the closest sibling aor his sister came to sit with him she always looked female, but now, as Jodas was undergoing his metamorphosis, she felt it, an Eka, not female yet. You know, um, our got, mm. uh, you know, he he, it, he felt that there's still chance for them to 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 go maybe uh, male, although to to this time, always felt uh, thought of her as female. Our got closer and noticed that Jodas is about to start his change, and to, to which he agreed, but said he feels different. Our asked him to show, and when he did, she immediately told him to go to speak to Dichan because something is wrong. He asked her what disturbs her in him, and here's an excerpt from the book. I don't know, it answered, but I don't like it. I've never felt it before. Something is wrong. It was afraid, and that was odd. New things normally drew its attention. This new thing repelled it. She slash it got up and went away, just left, which which was so out of character because two of them were always been so close. And the book says you only walk away from people you could no longer communicate with. Which yeah, I think we, we both uh, <laughs> called out as oh, that's a great line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm. this is the, it shows that something is going really wrong because you know when Akin was struggling with Tikuchak, that was because of the separation. Now we have you know two siblings that were three months. The book says three months uh, difference between them, and they were super mm. close up until now, right? So mm. that's rough. Yeah, some, something's come up as a a barrier between them. Yep, uh, yeah, absolutely. So. 
Nikanj finally comes and notices that Jodas is finally undergoing the metamorphosis, but it also notices that something is strange. As they rub their sensory arm, Jodas for the first time ever could feel the sensory filament slipping through their flesh. The deep touch of the sensory hand was air after long blundering swim underwater. Without thinking, I caught it second secondary arm um, between my hands. And that's when something went wrong. Um, Nikanch wouldn't sting anyone, but something happened. The shock Nikanch felt was sent through Jodas as well. It was so massive, Nikanch had to grab collapsing Jodas. Eventually, uh, once they calmed down, Nikanch dropped the bomb. Jodas was becoming the first Oloi construct. Hmm. Yeah, there's an interesting kind of uh, moment of realization there, right? They, they, they connect up and Nikanch is completely surprised yeah. by this. It's first time, yeah. to be honest, we see Nikanj to be surprised like this badly, right? <laughs> yeah, the Uloi are usually pretty unflappable, especially Nikanj. And yeah, this is uh, <laughs> uh, uh, not uh, not typical. So I can imagine who's going to like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, why have I done? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, definitely, I, I think that's going to be a, a panic moment as well as a, a realization <laughs> moment. <laughs> Hmm. That's when Jodan, uh, Jodan, Jodas began to be afraid and called out Nikanj's own parent, asking if it's still possible to change, considering that he looked male and was always considered a male. And this is the reason why I always I said he before because hmm. of the second chapter he was referred as he until now. Um, but Nikanj points out that they were an Eka, and they knew they know that once it starts, they can't stop the metamorphosis. But this was wrong. No construct before became an Uloi. So why now? That's when Nikanj connected fully with Jodas and immob immobilized it. Um, Nikanj was talking sort of to himself, saying um, that he made Jodas look male, very male, so that it would convince itself uh, to be a male. But even though Jodas felt like that, he never felt the urge to stick with Tino or Dichan. He always preferred Nikanj because Nikanj always felt so lonely. He had mates and children, but never had a connection to someone exactly like Nikanj, a same-sex child. It's an interesting um, uh, point there, right? Where Nikanj is talking about having made it look male and, and having made it, uh, you know, the, the sibling look female. Mm. Right? There's a uh, you know, the the A car is supposed to be, you know, sexless, sexless and can go either way, and then it seems like they, you know, do occasionally choose, but they also they're given kind of some kind of predisposition. Yeah. Uh, at the uh, in a, at the um, uh, intent of of the Uloi parent. I guess it's to an, an yeah, interesting it's, little. Uh, yeah, hmm? I guess it's to guide them towards the respective sort of um, sex, right? Um, hmm. I suppose there's a, an element of they want to retain a certain uh, you know, gender balance for yeah. reproductive purposes, right? No, <laughs> the, no absolutely. The, the appropriate proportion of people, but yeah, that's uh, absolutely. So yeah. it seems that it's interesting because we we were told, yeah, as you said earlier, that in the previous book we 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 didn't the the Eka didn't know what they will become until later. Although we did have inclination mm. of like you know Akin, for example, talking to his siblings, and they were like more female-like or male-like uh, and no but under after they underwent their metamorphosis they would preserve their they would change their look the way they look but they would preserve their sort of pre-established sex as as we were um mentioned but here mm. we are told actually in fact that uh it's it's more because actually to ensure that they become those respective sexes is to ensure that they they were made to look like it so that they have more connection with their parents corresponding yeah, it sex kind parents. Of like biases them in a direction where they'll hang out with their their same-sex parents and that actually provides the sort of biological cue to to fix that which is yeah, an interesting way of, of having that work yeah absolutely but, absolutely uh, so as usual more nature nurture stuff <laughs> yeah in this case it's more it's it's a lot of uh nurture involved from the whole lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, even the uh, the kind of uh, predisposition uh, set by the Uloi is itself kind of a a, nat a, 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 a um, nature, not no, a, a nurture thing rather than a nature thing, right? Yeah. Because it's it's not like it's sort of genetically encoded, but it's like, or maybe to some degree, it is. Um, it, this is confusing, uh, right? It, yeah. Because in mm. Don Kali, we know they're so genetical. Like the, everything is about the genetic, you know, genes and their DNA and the memory of the, the you know, of the genes. 
and yet mm. we have this sort of like the physical the, the the environment has effect on the well we knew that the environment has the effect because obviously we were told about like the you know uh, female on Kali you know being more stealthy to preserve and like stuff like that but most of the mm. stuff was and obviously the stress uh, in, you know indicating whether the non Kali would become an Ulo instead during the gest- the gestation mm. period but still it's but, so this is one of the things I really like about this book is it it really it it it, it uh, does a good job of portraying kind of genetic non-determinism in yeah. that sense right because yeah. there, there are genetic systems which maybe have a bias in a particular direction but they're switches right yeah. and when, when you're you know, your cells all have the same genetics but they do very different things and environmental context causes them to switch in a specific direction absolutely right? it's you know it's, you can can hardly get more different than you know a red blood cell and like a, a brain cell but same genetics just yeah. different environment yeah absolutely yeah. So yeah, the chapter ends here with Jodax asking what now, you know, when he can't tell it's metamorphosis is going well and there is no flaw. Here's a uh, cut from the book that I thought that is very important to, um, to, to reiterate. What will happen? I repeat it. You'll stay with us. No qualification. It would not allow me to be sent away. Yet it had agreed with the other on Kali a century before that any accidental construct Ulo must must be sent to the ship. There it could be watched, and any damage it did could be spotted and corrected quickly. On the ship, its every move would be monitored. On Earth, it might do great harm before anyone noticed. But Nikanj would not allow me to be sent away. It had said so. Hmm. Man, like, okay, honestly. Yeah. I got goosebumps <laughs> reading the last part. I was like, ooh, Nikanj, you bad boy. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we we have some uh, yeah, some some internal Oankali conflict, right? We've got uh, yes, the, yes, the rebellious Nikan. <laughs> but to be fair, if I was in the current position, I would do the same because for what the, the Oankali mm. did to Akin, right? Yeah, although it sounds like he kind of got off lucky, right? There was another section we didn't actually uh, cover where uh, um, they mentioned that some of the human-born males, which are still considered like experimentally and yeah. uh, experimental and potentially dangerous were, uh, you know, from other towns other than Lowe, had been sterilized and exiled to the ship. So, you know, they're cracking down on, um, you know, unapproved uh, construct compositions, I suppose. Yeah, this is this <laughs> is fascinating, right? Because it's it shows that... Um, it shows that you know some farmers like yep yeah, this guy is a bit too dangerous off to the ship for our chemical castration and you know being stuck on the ship for the rest of its existence a really long existence to add to it so um mm. pretty brutal um i would say behavior and i'm not surprised that like uh I, i'm sub- sort of like what you know it's not surprised that Nikanj uh also maybe you know he, he, the, the parental instincts in him in it uh mm. are speaking out but to be fair they did mess up akin and his uh, and his sibling bond with tichika uh, tikuchak and you know the whole situation mm. was just pretty the lilith's found I, I bet lilith had so some word with that like it's like nikan speaking to nikan if it ever happens again i'm going to literally go you know mm. go f- <laughs> full rambo on the on kali <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that, that's an interesting one actually i hadn't really thought about that yeah uh, i would it would be uh it would have been good to have been a fly on on the wall for a conversation <laughs> between uh Nikanj and lilith yeah. about what was going on with the king <laughs> yeah absolutely i feel like you know after you no know, three years like when like mm. you know uh you know uh, finally akin comes back to 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 law uh, you know the, pi- the personal pr- conversation between Liv and Nikanj is like Liv Nikanj is like Nikanj if it ever fucking f- happens again I'm literally going to burn the ship down you will see it falling like a meteorite onto the earth <laughs> <laughs> and I can imagine Nikanj taking it seriously because he knows what Lilith is capable of <laughs> yeah that's uh, the uh, one of the things that uh, we, we kind of got in the last uh, book right was that even the Owen Carly are kind of moderately intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which, no, uh, kind of great. Mm, love it. Love Lilith, honestly. Mm. One of the best protagonists mm. I've read in, the, in a while. Mm. But yeah, I guess that, that okay, pretty much yeah. finishes pretty our much brings us first to the two end. chapters. Mm. Should we go to the chapter three prediction? 
Uh, sure, yeah. What do you think's going to happen next? So, honestly, <laughs> my mind was blown with the whole idea of that we get an uh, actual Oloi construct, right? Like, you know, and I thought that the Onkali world is about to get rocked hard. Like, you know, if anybody finds out, like anybody, so, you know, like the family will, you know, the whole family is going to be told um, about, you know, Joda and his situation. And I'm sure as... <laughs> I can hundred percent sure, be hundred percent sure that you know they're going to be quiet, keep quiet on it. But because if anybody finds out, the Onkali are gonna go, you know, ballistic. Because definitely, some Uloi within the lower village is going to sense mm. something wrong, and then okay. they might just be like, alarm, alarm, you know, just you know, break the, you know, in case of all Uloi construct, break the glass type of thing, you know, sending messages mm. straight away to the mothership type of thing. Interesting. Okay, so you think they're going to try and keep it all on the down low and conceal this? Uh, any idea what what uh, strategy they might take to try and keep uh, keep Jodas? Uh, oh, secret? I don't know. To be honest, because I mean, the thing is, the book set up already has set it up to fail, right? That the, the whole trying mm. to keep it because one trying to keep anything from Don Kali, it's gonna be tough mm. because um, the uh the 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 houses the low village will already detect something is going on and if anyone kali connects to the low village especially in the Uloi, they will be able to tell there's some strange thing going on furthermore the reason why i said that um it's already fail is set to fail is because um Aor, yes, Aor, that's what's her name. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. already sensed something wrong and they're like the closest siblings and if the closest sibling goes and like just goes to speak to anyone, and we know they probably will. That there's something wrong with Joda. Some other Onkali may be interested, Uloi or something, and then it, it, we already have a broken link in the chain, right? That there's already Aero mm. being feeling uncomfortable with their closest sibling, so that will already set some alarms out. So, how many people do you think are going to be like, uh, you know, in on the uh, in on the secret? Oh. T- <laughs> Definitely Lilith, Tino, Tichan, Achjas. Um, obviously, our probably will figure out the, it eventually. Um, I don't know, whoever else. Uh, maybe the close, I don't know, maybe the sib- other siblings, but maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure, to be honest, like if anybody else would mm-hmm. be put in. But I feel like it's going to be just very, very brief, very fragile um, secret that it's going to go out very, come out very quickly soon and also the reason why i'm saying is that because uh sort of you know reading the book i spoiled myself uh because i'm reading the ebook <laughs> that the 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 chapter that the parts names <laughs> were there and i saw uh, yeah the table of contents yeah the yeah. table of contents <laughs> told me the name of the second part i'm like mm, it sort of <laughs> it tells me that the, it's not gonna stay in the secret for a long time hmm. okay <laughs> Apologies for that. <laughs> hey, it's the table of contents. It's, 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 if, it, if it's, it, you, there's not much you can do about spoilers from the table of contents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I so honestly, I uh, I feel like it's going to be a very fragile secret that is going to come out very soon. Um, there's going to be a panic and you know panic in a disco um, type of thing. So. We are about to see, you know, Don Kali world literally be shaken to its core. Okay, good prediction. Thank you. Be good to see uh, <laughs> how that works out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but looking forward to it because it's, you know, it's generally it's super exciting, right? I don't know why, but like, it, I mean, we had the break um, between now mm-hmm. and the special episode and this episode, obviously, which as we as we mentioned, and you know, the, our special episode came out about immortality and you know it, it's been a while since i read the book and each time i go back to it it's like yeah i want to read more i can't <laughs> <laughs> i'm only allowed every yeah, few so chapters or every so often so it's like Ugh. yeah uh, dragging that week to week yeah <laughs> but honestly this is yeah. probably the most studied book i've like the, the se- series of books i've read and because <laughs> yeah i mean like for, for me too at this point right because I, I know you know i read stuff and then you know I, I reflect on it a little bit but i don't like you know delve into <laughs> thinking about <laughs> every little aspect of it have an extended conversation about it for you know 
over the course of like several years <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy but it's great honestly love it but yeah i guess mm. that that's us for today what do you think i think so yeah yeah uh, i mean it's a slightly shorter episode uh but we had a kind of ridiculously long almost like three hour one so yeah so, so it's, <laughs> it's nice if we go back to sweet short episodes <laughs> balances out a little bit yeah so thank you very much everyone for listening we're Xeno Thesis you can find all the places we upload our podcast on our website xenothesis.com I was Michael Glinka and I was Richard Acton thank you and bye, bye.